As anybody who's a fan of Disney and Pixar will already know, there are generally two kinds of ways to tell a story. With one being the once upon a time fashion, and the other the what if fashion. Now, of course, there are other approaches to telling stories, but the rest often fall under the general umbrella of those two ways. Now, the biggest difference between the two is that the once upon a time variety tells a set story of how events played out to get to a conclusion, while the what if variety is much more about just placing characters in a certain time, place, or environment and letting events play out as they may. Now, obviously, both of these have their advantages and disadvantages, and it isn't actually uncommon for storytellers to combine aspects of both these styles together in an effort to make their stories better. And today, I'd like to go over these storytelling styles in a bit more detail. And spoilers for quite a few movies will abound, so in case you don't want anything ruined, you might just want to be on the lookout. I'll be giving out no other spoiler warnings in this video. Alright, so to cut right to the chase, the biggest criticisms both these storytelling techniques usually face is that in the case of Once Upon a Time, the story is too contrived, while in the case of What If, the plot is too weak or thin. However, People are often more forgiving of a movie that doesn't have much of a plot than a contrived story, especially if that lack of plot is still told well regardless of that. In fact, once upon a time style or not, one thing that really gets on people's nerves is a plot that doesn't make complete and total sense. And as a writer myself, I do agree with that. If aspects of a story don't make sense or aren't believable, then it isn't a very well told one. But there is also more to it than that. Because sometimes reality is unrealistic. Sometimes what many think would never happen does actually happen. That's why biopics, for example, are able to get away with both contrivances and thin plots in their movies because they can always fall back on the fact that the events they're depicting actually did happen that way. For example, in Goodfellas, at one point Henry Hill ends up in jail because the man he tried to feed to a lion had a sister who worked as a desk clerk for the FBI and threw Hill, his accomplice, and her own brother under the bus. Now, in any other movie, that would be considered totally unbelievable and just lazy writing to get him in prison. But the thing is, that actually happened. The man's sister really did work as a desk clerk for the FBI and turned them all in after Hill threatened him at the zoo. So while it may be contrived, it can't be considered bad writing because the movie is based on real events. And that's how he really ended up in jail. Now, what's my point with all of this? That sometimes it's okay for a story to get a little bit contrived or unbelievable. Because again, seemingly random, impossible to believe things happen all the time to people in real life. So why shouldn't they be able to happen in a fictional story? Now, before you accuse me of contradicting myself, in order for contrivances to actually work within a story, it can't be too out of the realm of possibility, and must still be told in an overall believable fashion. And while there has been many a movie to get that completely wrong, there are also just as many examples that have managed to get this right. And one of the best examples I can give for that is Home Alone. When it first came out, the chief criticism it had among critics was that the story was too contrived and unbelievable, while audiences loved it for what it was. And the thing is, this is one case where, ironically enough, 
all of the contrivances that do happen in the story have to be there in order for the story to be believable. Because this is very much a once upon a time kind of story. In this case being, once upon a time, there was a kid who was left home all by himself and had to deal with robbers trying to break into his house. So in order for the story to play out that way, certain events need to happen in order to get the characters to that end point. And only some of these things include the phone lines going out so the family can't call Kevin, them going to a different country to delay them being able to come back, him being scared by old man Marley so he doesn't answer the door for the police, as well as him accidentally stealing the toothbrush so he'll be afraid to call the police when he realizes what the robbers are up to, them sleeping in so they accidentally forget him in their rush to get to the airport, as well as the neighbor's kid showing up when he does to further reinforce that, and Kevin causing a ruckus so he ends up sleeping alone and therefore missing the chaos of the next morning, the robbers planning to rob every house on the street anyway, and Kevin coming from a more wealthy household, which allows him access to all the things he needs to foil the robbers, as well as nobody ever finding out that he's actually alone, so he'll have to deal with the whole thing himself. Honestly, when you really look at it, the whole movie really just serves as one big explanation for why the climax gets to play out the way it does. And yet, why does it work? Mainly for two reasons. One, all of these contrivances are within the realm of possibility. Sure, it's unlikely that something like this would have played out in the late 80s or early 90s, but once again, there's nothing to say it couldn't have. Because again, while a lot of things do have to fall perfectly into place for the movie to tell its intended story, it's always presented in a way that's at least believable. And second, as I already brought up, this movie is about a kid left home alone and has to fend off robbers by himself. So once again, unless you're going to throw reality out the window entirely, then these contrivances are needed for this story to play out the way it does. And frankly, the attention to detail is pretty amazing at that. And once again, strange, bizarre, and unpredictable things do happen all the time in real life. So as long as it stays believable, which this movie does manage to, then the same should be able to apply to a fictional story. And sometimes it is better to tell a story in this fashion rather than try and tie everything together. Because an earlier version of the script would have actually done just that, with it being revealed that Uncle Frank manipulated events so that Kevin would be left behind and paid Marvin Harry to both rob the house and kill Kevin out of jealousy for his brother's wealth. But in the end, they decided to just have Frank be a cheap jerk who has nothing to do with what goes down, and had Kevin's being left behind left up to a series of coincidences with the robbers sweeping through the whole area. And frankly, I think many would agree that the movie is better off for it. Because while Frank turning out to be behind everything could have worked, it just seems like an unnecessarily dark twist for a movie of this nature. And not to mention, in the end they managed to portray his being left behind by mistake, while keeping his family completely sympathetic almost perfectly. Now once again, please don't misunderstand me here. I'm not saying that one should just accept every fluke and contrived situation that happens in movies. I'm simply saying that they aren't always a bad thing. In fact, many felt the exact reason none of the Home Alone sequels were that good was because the stories quickly got too contrived and unbelievable, which is exactly what the first one went out of its way to avoid. Because yes, it does rely heavily on coincidences, but never anything that arguably couldn't happen 
while the sequels quickly push the boundaries too far with little justification for it. So what I'm really getting at here is, sometimes a story can, or even needs to be, a little contrived, and should be able to get away with it as long as it stays believable. Because again, strange things happen in real life all the time, so the same should be accepted, or even expected, to happen in stories too. In fact, the ability to turn coincidences or serendipity into plot points can actually be the mark of a good writer. Because as I touched on before, pretty much the entirety of Home Alone's runtime is just an extended prologue so that famous scene of the robbers breaking into the house will actually make sense. And because that quote-unquote prologue always stays believable, all that setup actually manages to deliver a pretty good payoff. Or take a movie like Back to the Future. Often used in film schools as one of the best uses of foreshadowing and setup and payoff in all of cinema, this movie also has its fair share of coincidences and delivered perhaps the greatest time travel movie of all time in the process. Which just goes to show that even when dealing with something as unrealistic as time travel, one of the most important parts of storytelling is to always stay believable, especially when it comes to potential contrivances in, in the story. And once again, that's the key here. It doesn't matter how a coincidence is used in a story, just so long as it makes sense and is within the realm of possibility. Now please do note here that just because something could theoretically happen, that doesn't automatically mean it'll be believable. Not breaking the audience's suspension of disbelief is arguably the most important part of storytelling, because if your audience no longer believes it, then there's no point in telling it at all. So it's always very important to remember that if one is allowing a coincidence or contrivance to dictate important things that will happen in a story, it must be ones that the audience will believe is possible. And the line between what is and isn't believable can be a pretty fine one. But as certain movies have shown, it most definitely can work. And when it does, it can work really well. Okay, I think that's everything I had to say on that. So now why don't you guys tell me? Do you believe that it's okay for stories to have contrivances in them as long as they're believable? Or do you prefer when they avoid coincidences entirely? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, you don't have to agree with me on this video. You are entitled to your own opinion on this and can think I'm dead wrong if you want to. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.